Hi, uh, welcome to the Allen Institute for Brain Science uh, in Seattle, Washington. Um, this is the main en entryway here, and I'm uh, Mike Harberliz, uh, Director of uh, Modeling Analysis and Theory at the Institute. I've um, been here for a long time, uh, pretty much uh, it's, it's, it's 10, 10 years since the beginning. And uh, we're going to talk about a few different things that are kind of projects uh, past and present that are going on at the Institute. Um, this kind of uh, concludes our main, uh, one of our main kind of flagship products, which was the, the, uh, Al, the Allen Mouse Brain Atlas, which was a large scale, genome scale, uh, in situ hybridization map of the mouse brain, showing where all the genes are expressed in the mouse brain, standard laboratory mouse brain, and uh, some other projects that we've moved on to in recent years, including the Human Brain Atlas and the uh, Connectomics Atlas and uh, some other things. Right now we're in one of the main laboratories that uh, has been kind of the workhorse laboratory at the Institute. All the uh, large sort of in-situ in hybridization was done here for the mouse brain atlas as well as for the uh, aspects of the human atlas as well. Uh, basically around us are se several machines involved in, in uh, processing, pre-processing the data. Behind us uh, these guys are working on a, uh, a large scale cryostat capable of cutting six by eight inch kind of plates for human tissue. Um, and they're going to be using this for uh, uh, sort of prototyping tissue for, for human cell types for our, one of our new projects which is involved in characterizing uh, the nature of cells in the human brain. Full process uh, from tissue to web um, basically it involves starting with uh, a, 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 a mouse brain which is extracted from an anesthetized mouse um, and uh, then it is fresh frozen and, and, and essentially mounted on a, on a block with a, some, on an item called a cryostat, a much smaller version of this one here, such that tissue sections can be cut. Um, and basically after they're cut, they're placed onto slides and the, the uh, gene expression kind of protocol, the in-situ hybridization protocol, runs to uh, uh, basically take pro probes, for one for each gene, and uh, set, um, determine uh, by placing reagents on these slides uh, and allow, allow the uh, kind of reagent to bind with, with mRNA that is expressing and, and, and then it's sort of imaged to basically show uh, in situ where the, where the gene is expressing. Um, from there, these slides can be put uh, in, in microscopy, stacked into, into microscopy suites and imaged at high resolution to, to have a sense spatially where uh, the gene is expressed. Um, from there, it goes over to the informatics team, and the informatics team um, takes those images and reassembles them into 3D maps, 3D volumes, which can be used to um, uh, see, understand the spatial context. Um, after that, our, our web group takes over and they build products that can be released and presented on the web for, for viewing. Imaging has varied depending on um, the, the nature of the project. The earliest imaging that we used for the mouse brain was very just sort of fairly standard high resolution light based microscopy. Um, and then uh, image, the small one by one centimeter uh, um, mouse section was scanned at 10x producing about 50 by 10,000 uh, pixel size images which were then scanned into JPEG 2000 format uh, and uh, so for presentation. Um, more recently, like in the, for the con Connectomics Atlas, uh, we use two photon imaging and, and with, a, with actually a block face component, which is uh, a, a, a kind of a remarkable technology. Here, the, brain, the, the mouse brain is, is mounted, and uh, uh, right before a section is taken, uh, two photon microscopy images it at a depth of about 70 microns to, to get basically uh, to understand what, what, what is the specific local kind of image. And then a section is cut and then the process repeats. This gives you uh, essentially an automatic registration without having to go through the image processing uh, steps. Uh, for the last 10 years, a lot of our work has been centered around um, building large-scale atlases. And what this has meant is that subject to uh, strong consideration of what's important to the atlases and what will matter to the community, it's a form of unbiased data profiling. And this gives us a good general picture of the structure of the genome in the brain, structure of connectivity in the brain, in the human brain, the mouse brain, uh, non-human primate as well. Uh, so here you can see the primary injection site here has been in, in somatosensory cortex in the barrel field. Uh, responsible for whisker movement and other kind of somatosensory movements. And the projections have come down here 
uh, into, uh, uh, into the thalamus, probably into reticular nucleus in the thalamus and in the on onward into other areas. Um, the, the useful thing about this data is that one can see in all the sections uh, the, the full kind of brain uh, c projection to wherever in, the, in other sections in the brain. And we've been building 3D tools around kind of visualizing this data and to bring it into so people can see in a, in a 3D context. Uh, but moving forward, we're much more interested in adding uh, the notion of, of, of strong leverage scientific hypothesis to our work. And this, so some of our new programs are, uh, in, are investigator driven and are resulting to both produce uh, sort of large scale databases and, and um, uh, image maps, but also done so with scientific directives and answering fundamental questions. For example, one of our uh, their more recent big initiatives, MindScope, is concerned with uh, trying to understand um, the sort of the, the neural coding in the mouse cortex. How, do, when, how does the mouse respond to uh, stimuli that it sees that it, that, um, that it, during activity when it's executing a task? How is that information conveyed from the retina to the uh, thalamus to the cortex and how can it be interpreted? So what we do in the modeling analysis and theory group is that we're primarily concerned with interpretation, uh, quantifiable interpretation of the data. And this uh, means that, that we're in, we, we, like, we, we want to measure statistical properties of the data both from the images and from signals that could be electrophysiological signals. It could be basic image parameters that can be quantified and, and measured from data. And we try, we use uh, methods of modeling as in kind of neuronal modeling and classical kind of computational uh, neuroscience uh, through analysis of gene expression data and statistical methods to try to lend interpretation to the data. We put all this data and produce it, um, put it out on the web for people to use, make it accessible. We develop methods and, and um, uh, sort of software tools for people to analyze and to download and to manipulate this data because we, all, we hope that there's a lot of information to be discovered and uncovered in this uh, from the community. In particular, uh, from the raw images alone, um, a lot of the SPIE community, medical image could uh, uh, analyze this data, use this data, develop new methods for uh, determining uh, content in the, in, in the data and contributing to the neuroscience field.